Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Minister Allen. Thank you so much. So today my topic is going to be on myasthenia gravis. Um, it is one of the health topics for the month of June. And so I wanted to touch base with that for today. So what is myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis is a rare long-term chronic autoimmune neuromuscular disease that causes weakness in the skeletal muscles. It's the muscles that connect your bones and contract to all body movement in the arms and legs and allow for breathing. The hallmark of myasthenia gravis is muscle weakness that worsens after periods of, of activity and improves after periods of rest. Certain muscles are often but not always involved in the disorder, such as those that control your eye and eyelid movements, facial expression, chewing, talking, swallowing. The onset of the disorder may be sudden and symptoms may not be immediately recognized as myasthenia gravis. The degree of muscle weakness involved in varies greatly among individuals. So what are some of the symptoms? Visual problems, including drooping eyelids, ptosis, and double vision. Muscle weakness and fatigue may vary rapidly in intensity over days or even hours and worsen as muscles are used, early fatigue. Facial muscle involvement causing a mass-like appearance. A smile may appear more like a, sn a, snar a snarl, trouble swallowing or pronouncing words, weakness of the neck or limbs. The symptoms of myasthenia gravis may look like other conditions. So it may even look like a stroke, a person's having a stroke. So you wanna make sure that you see a doctor for a diagnosis. Flare-ups and remissions, easy of, easing of symptoms may occur now and then during the course of myasthenia gravis. Remissions, however, are only rarely permanent or complete. And this is just some of the symptoms that I already went over with you. The drooping of one or both eyelids, double vision, altered speaking, difficulty swallowing, problem chewing, and limited facial expressions. So who's more likely to get myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis affects both males and females and occurs across all racial and ethnic groups. It most commonly impacts young adult females under 40 and older males over 60, but it can occur at any age, including childhood. Myasthenia gravis is not inherited, nor is it contagious. Occasionally, the disease may occur in more than one member of the same family. Although myasthenia gravis is rarely seen in infants, the fetus may acquire antibodies from a female parent, a condition called neonatal myasthenia. Neonatal myasthenia gravis is generally temporary, and the child's symptoms usually disappear within two to three months after birth. Rarely children of a healthy female parent may develop congenital my myasthenia. This is not an autoimmune disorder, but is caused by defective genes that produce abnormal proteins in the connection between the end of the nerve that carries signals from brain to a muscle, the neuromuscular junction, and can cause similar symptoms as myasthenia gravis. How is myasthenia gravis diagnosed? The doctor would diagnose myasthenia gravis based on symptoms and certain tests. During the physical exam, the doctor may ask about medical history and symptoms. A common way to diagnose myasthenia gravis is to test how you res someone responds to certain medicines. Muscle weakness often dramatically improves for a brief time when you're given an anticholinesterine medicine. If you respond to the medicine, it confirms myasthenia gravis. Other tests that may be done include blood tests. These tests look for antibodies that may be present in people with myasthenia gravis. Genetic tests. These tests are done to check for conditions that run in families. Nerve, con nerve conduction studies is a test called repetitive nerve stimulation is used to diagnose myasthenia gravis. And they do what's called an EMG, a test that measures the electrical activity of a muscle. An EMG can detect abnormal electrical muscle activity due to disease and neuromuscular conditions. How is myasthenia gravis treated? Specific treatment for myasthenia gravis will be determined by the healthcare provider based on how old the person is, the overall health and medical history, how sick the individual is, how well someone can handle specific medicines, procedures, or therapies, how long the condition is expected to last, and the preference of the individual. There's no cure for myasthenia gravis at this time, but the symptoms can often be controlled. Myasthenia gravis is a lifelong medical condition. Early detection is the key to managing 
the condition. The goal of treatment is to increase muscle function and prevent swallowing and breathing problems. Most people with this condition can improve their muscle strength and lead normal or near normal lives. In more severe cases, help may be needed for breathing and eating. Medicines use anticholinesterase medicines, steroids, or medicines that suppress the immune system response. Thymectomy. This is a surgical removal of the thymus gland. The role of the thymus gland in myasthenia gravis is not fully understood and the thymectomy may or may not improve symptoms. However, it reduces symptoms in more than 70% of people who do not have cancer of the thymus, possibly altering the immune system response. Plasmapheresis, a procedure that removes abnormal antibodies from the blood and replaces the blood with normal antibodies from donated blood. Immunoglobulin, a blood product that helps decrease the immune system's attack on the nervous system, it is given intravenously. What are some of the complications? The most serious complications of myasthenia gravis is a my, what's called a myasthenia crisis. This is a condition of extreme muscle weakness, particularly of the diaphragm and chest muscles that support breathing. Breathing may become shallow or ineffective. The airway may become blocked because of weakened throat muscles and buildup of secretions. Myasthenia crisis may be caused by a lack of medicine or by other factors such as respiratory infection, emotional stress, surgery, or some other type of stress. In severe crisis, a person may have to be placed on a ventilator to help with breathing until muscle strength returns with treatment. Precautions, which may help to prevent or minimize the occurrence of myasthenia crisis, include taking medications 30 to 45 minutes before meals to reduce the risk of aspiration. Taking medicines exactly as prescribed to help maintain the strength of the breathing muscle. Avoiding crowds and contact with people with respiratory infections such as cold and flu. And taking in proper nutrition to maintain optimal weight and muscle strength. Balancing periods of physical activity with periods of rest. Using stress reduction techniques and avoiding emotional extremes. Some statistics. The prevalence of myasthenia gravis, in, especially in the United States, is estimated at 14 to 20 per 100,000 population, approximately 36,000 to 60,000 cases in the US alone. It is estimated that myasthenia gravis affects more than 700,000 people worldwide. In Canada, there is an estimated prevalence of 26.3 cases per 100,000 people. Where can someone find information to get support? Mycena Gravis. Information may be available for following organization and resources. mg.united.com, myasthenia.org, Autoimmune Association, Medline Plus, Muscular Dystrophy Association, and Myasthenia Gravis Foundation, especially here in the United States. And there are 800 numbers, 1-800-541-5454 for the foundation here in the U.S. I want to give special acknowledgement to the Cleveland Clinic, John Hopkins, Neonatal Institute of Neurological Dis Disorder for the information that I've provided to you today. I hope this was helpful and should you have any questions, please feel free to join me in the Zoom room immediately after service. I'll be happy to answer them for you. That includes questions for my topic last Sunday that we did not get to discuss. Thank you so much. God bless and enjoy the rest of the service.